Good morning, folks. We've got space weather, fire, cold, flooding, solar forecasting, exciting Mars chemistry, a star on the loose, and climate uncertainty. Let's begin at spaceweathernews.com to find the last day on our star with three things of note. First, the central coronal hole is connecting to Earth magnetically today. Its solar wind will arrive this weekend. The next coronal hole is visible incoming on the north, left of the Earth scale, while a bright active region comes in to the south. That bright region is not the first active area with umbral magnetic fields we've seen the last few weeks, but it is the first one to come with any significant sunspots. Now, while the individual spots are tiny, appear to perhaps even lack penumbra, there are indeed about 10 cores in the grouping. No solar flaring yet. Solar wind is calming down even if it's taking a winding road to get there. This calm, following an already weak stream, has the KP on the floor. Eyes on that for extended zero runs of cosmic ray concern. Earth stories begin in Australia. We have mentioned these already this week, but just wanted to show the fire return from space on the Himawari satellite. That is way too much of the eastern region ablaze at this time. The screenshot of the top search results from a look at record cold really say everything that needs to be said. Hundreds of records shattered, early snow sneaking deep into the south, and tragedy coming with it. Folks, Venice is used to water, but not this much water. Even for their high water season, this is excessive, nearing their record levels. We all watched this system in the forecast the last few days. Hopefully, relief for them is on the horizon next. First up on the science news is the latest among dozens of forecasts for the upcoming solar cycle. While they do span from very few spots to a super active cycle, those extremes are outliers in the forecast, with nearly all of them looking something like this one. They forecast a slightly stronger, but still very weak solar cycle, which is what we would expect from the alternating cycle strength pattern here with grand minimum still on the table for the remainder of the century. Up next, we go out to Mars, where we read between the lines of sister articles released last night. The first is more interpretive, as they still have their methane mystery looming, they now have an oxygen 1-2. In spring and summer, a mysterious boom in oxygen levels are seen, with an equilibrium rendering drop below expected levels in wintertime. My first instinct is to blame extremophile microbes in the soil, perhaps deep soil, but that's just me. And as long as they aren't too deep, which indeed they might be, the Mars 2020 mission might spot them. They expect to travel along a once water-laden region and look for fossilized remains of those same bacteria that would explain the oxygen mystery. Okay, we're off to space and we're flying right towards the center of the galaxy. We are inside much of what we can see from Earth and we begin to dance through the firestorm of stars orbiting closely to the galactic nucleus. But there's a problem. We're a binary system, and the acceleration and dynamical interaction with the galactic nucleus means this town ain't big enough for the both of us. And this is how you end up with the most buffoonish advanced species in the cosmos, staring up into space and realizing, hey, there's a star up there going so fast it's going to escape the Milky Way, and it's never coming back. Seems a harsh sentence for just getting a little curious about what really lies at the galactic center. But we all dream. Anyway, our top story. 10 points to the Science Daily contributors for catching this one I missed at the end of the summer. Indeed, we hear a familiar note of model uncertainty in the climate realm, and that creates an unseen error range for the climate predictions looking into the future. This is the same issue as was recognized over 20 years ago by NASA scientists. We are less than halfway in the advancements they said were needed to bring minimally reliable climate forecasts. We want very reliable climate forecasts, and in reality, NASA likely underestimated that road to hoe by at least half. To see this bit from NASA in its place among other recent deviations from the climate conversations, check out the Top 5 Climate Shockers video showing NASA, the UN, Harvard, Yale, and Princeton all playing their part in re-steering this titanic ship known as climate change, even if the mainstream news media hasn't picked up on it yet. Folks, we greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.